guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. It's been a busy week, but kind of a weird weather week, and it's windy. Yeah, it's really dark today. outside. I actually, I looked yeah. at all the cameras this morning. Mm -hmm. um, I, first thing I did when I woke up, I looked through all the cameras, and I was like, I'll bet we have a tree down yeah, somewhere. Yeah, I did the same <laughs> did thing. you really? When I hear gusts in the middle of the night, I bring up cameras, and I'm like, okay, is the mulberry still safe? Yep. Right. Are the willows still up? Yep. <laughs> yeah, those willows, like, they're going to come down at, at some, some point. point. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's inevitable. I feel like the willows will. At some point, yeah. the mulberry will and the ash tree in the driveway will by the chicken ash coop. Tree in the, oh, it's like half sick. It's got tons yeah, of yeah, borer yeah, damage yeah, in yeah, it. Right. Yeah, yep. yeah. You know, I I don't trust trees anymore. It's um, you know, we're almost like uh, pre grieving for the trees. That's like, good though. You when, set yourself up for the reality of yeah, the situation, right. and then you're not totally bombed out when it happens. Yeah, that's a good way to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Last year was nice though. We didn't have a lot of wind. No, we didn't. It was really, really nice. Yeah, but today, uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be doing anything outside. Super, super gusty, and it's chilly. And we did have an earthquake near-ish, nearby this past week. It was, I don't know how many miles away, but we were right on the edge. You know how they show the center on a map, and then they show, like, the affected area, I guess? Mm -hmm. And we sit right on the edge of it, and I guess some people felt it. We didn't, but yeah. our power went out well, for three hours. it was windy that day. Um, it anyway, was. Anyway, and so, like... I don't know that we would have, you know, because when the wind gusts, you can kind of feel a little bit up against the house. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like the house, you know, mm -hmm. the house kind of rattles. Like, whenever there's, it's gusty. So, because um, I was thinking about that later, like, would I have even known if there was an earthquake? It could have just I been one have. of the rattles right. and you wouldn't have known. It was just very coincidental that the power went out right when the earthquake happened. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a large uh, swath of people that were out. Mm -hmm. I know, like, my parents who are only a mile away were out. But um, like across town, like your parents weren't out at mm -hmm. Andrews. I right. know other people weren't out. So it's so weird. Anyway, hopefully we'll have some better weather days. I do notice our highs are like mid to high 40s for the next 10 days, Yeah, which I, I like. But that puts lows at high high 20s around freezing. So I'll have to cover planters. That's the one downside of planting things a little early, but I'll do it every single year because it's it feels worth it to me to see just the to color get that color a little early yeah and i don't care if they're wrapped up for a few nights yeah we get that well that probably would do okay now now that they've been out there mm -hmm. for a couple weeks some of the flowers they're probably acc acclimated enough to not have to have any covering on them didn't you have pansies that made it through the whole winter yeah well in a lot of times those cold season stuff things even if they get hit by a light frost they'll look kind of like sad in the morning and then they pick back up yeah. and look good by midday sure they can handle it it isn't i don't think it's necessarily great for them because it does provide some stress or yeah. produces stress in the plant and so they may not look quite some as good. plants thrive on stress though yeah like they need it if they don't yeah. get the stress then they like puncture vines Ugh. you could kill puncture vines with too much water right that, that that's how you kill Not them. A, it doesn't when you say too much water you don't even need to give them that much water yeah. to kill them yeah like they just want any that amount of water at all practically yeah. and they they don't like it yeah i don't think there's much we need to go over except i was <clears> going <throat> to mention that on our store the green stock vertical gardens that we have carried for a while yeah we've only been carrying the one right uh, so two two well okay so we've got two styles and two colors okay and we opened it up now to all the things all the colors all the things green stock we now stock yeah <laughs> yeah so anyway in honor of uh being able to offer all that we can do 10 percent off okay so, no code It'll uh, just yeah be... we'll put a code Somewhere else, somewhere on the screen. Anyway, I, I think that was it, right? We yeah, can jump so. into the videos from this past week, which the first one was working in the rose garden, pruning and fertilizing. So I think we have, what, 60 roses out there is what I said. Um, and I needed to cut them back and get them fertilized. And oh, it was so satisfying. You know, was, uh, as I was editing that video, I was thinking we almost need to just take out every other row. But that would be just slightly too much space. Yeah. It's the problem. Like what we need to do is dig the whole first row and shift it in like two feet and have that be our starting. So we have a little extra yeah. between the roses and the grass and then do like one and a half times the space that I gave them. So yeah. I think How did it, we get that so wrong. Well, We're, I'm, I'm did surprised you, know? you said we, did you? <laughs> well, you know what? It was just as much my fault because you showed me your plans and I signed off on it. I mean, not that you needed me to sign off on it, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. We bounce things off of each other to just make sure we're not crazy. Yeah. We were crazy. Like, that was 
that was crazy to I space know, them so but close. you did mention, you asked, like, did is I? that enough space to walk? I was like, yeah, <laughs> of course it is. I want 87 roses in there <laughs> instead of I mean, of they're totally, there's no space to walk. Well, There's not no. even a foot. Once they grow, <laughs> you know, when they're, when they're newly planted, there's enough space. And when you trim them back, there's enough space early in the season. But the roses grow too dang well in our area. You know, maybe it's, well, it's a roses. That's the problem. Like with dahlias, you can just kind of like shimmy between yeah. dahlias. We just break branches. If they're in our way, we just like bowl through it. Just but with the roses, bread. you can't do, you no. actually, that's like the one plant you have to have the space for. Right. Because you're not going to just shimmy between the thorny branches. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, I wonder if I could get some kind of like grow through grid to place over each rose that holds everything more upright. Oh, sure. And then just trim everything else. But that kind of defeats the purpose because then you trim potential blooms and you want the most amount of blooms yeah. to cut. I think we need to dig them up. I know. I know. But I think we should plan a digging day. We'll order pizza for everybody. Oh, <laughs> we'll have a Pizza is not a motivator. I always <laughs> thought that was such baloney when I worked at places like I didn't want the pizza lunch. Thank you. I would like an extra hour off today <laughs> or yeah. something, you know, like that. <clears throat> or um, more money. I was, I remember my boss asking me about that one time. Like, mm-hmm. you know, what motivates me? And I was like, money. Mon- That's money? why I'm here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm only working so I can yeah. make money to go do things I actually want to go do. Right. Yeah. So I don't know about the pizza motivator, but it yeah. wouldn't hurt. Yeah. You know what? We'll, uh, we'll bring in pizza and we'll do a couple hours off. Perfect. After the digging. That would, that might do it. Yeah. Yeah. Paid time off. <laughs> I think if we eliminated, so there's, how many rows are there? Eight? <clears throat> One, two, three, four, two, four. I think there's eight rows. If we got it down to six, yeah. I think if we had six rows, that would be reasonable. Sure. And I think that, I don't know. Now that they're all pruned though, like it'd be so much easier because you can actually access the plant. So that yeah. needed to happen either way. That's what I was figuring. But the I was problem is we have to pull up all the drip. And we have to pull up. Oh, that's easy. Which the drip is not that big yeah. of a deal. But the landscape, um, fabric. landscape fabric and the mulch. Uh, the mulch doesn't bother me at all. All we need to do is pull the drip line, pull the landscape fabric. Super easy. We did landscape fabric in the walking rows, which I'm so glad we did that. And I remember kind of feeling like, should we be like, should we you be know, because people get so weird about landscape fabric. But I feel like there is a place to use it. And that is the place because if it eliminates spraying herbicide chemicals, like, I mean, yeah. really. Um, so I don't know. We just need to pull that up. We can use the same pieces. Well, it's all tacked down. We could still probably use the same pieces, but we just need to shift everything. I yeah. honestly don't think it would be that much. I mean, digging 60 roses is a lot, but as far as the infrastructure, I'm not super worried about that. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Anyway, we got them pruned. I went through the process of how I prune them, and then we did some rose tone, an application of rose tone. It was sort of breezy that day. That's kind of in the order of the week. Mm -hmm. Uh, Linda said, uh, how long did it take you to prune all those roses? I I think, well, I filmed it, so it took a little longer. I think I looked at my microphone, and it was just under three hours, Hmm. but that was moving cameras around and stuff. It probably would have just been a couple-hour job. If I wasn't That's pretty good. It. Yeah, well, they're not super massive. I mean, a lot of them were small. Yeah. So it was easy just to kind of da, 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 just yeah. work your way through it. And once I got through like the explanation portion in the beginning, that always takes the longest. Once I'm actually just doing the work, it's fast. I have a question. Yeah. Did you notice a difference? You know, we planted a lot of roses from um, that one company. That Heirloom. Heirloom roses. Uh-huh. Did you notice a difference between any of those? Because those came in one gallon pots versus any of the other varieties that we planted. No. Better or worse? Um, no. I, there was and you a, planted some bare root, too. Well, they weren't actually bare root. They just hadn't rooted into... Well, if I technically... No, other plants were bare root. You planted some bare root, didn't you? Or no? Well, they came out of those peat pots mm-hmm. from the garden center. But they were... So they had been potted, but they hadn't rooted in enough. Mm-hmm. So when I took them out, all the soil fell away from their roots. So it's essentially like planting a bare root. Sure. Right? Because I didn't have any other ones. I was just curious if you noticed any differences between... No, and Grace, uh, Grace Rose Farm sent out 12 roses, and those were all in one-gallon containers as well. And I don't think I really noticed a huge difference. There was a few roses that didn't do as well. Um, there was one called Black Lady, who um, that one was pretty... Like, I have one stem left on that one. It's a beautiful rose, so I hope it, it bounces. Plants are pretty resilient. Mm-hmm. And then there was maybe one or two more that I ended up with very little plants because there was a lot of dead 
but I, I can't remember who's was where who's. it came from. Yeah. Kat said, is it possible to cut roses back too far? I've been inspired by your roses throughout the garden, have just planted a rose border with eight roses, and I'm happy they've taken well with new growth showing already. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Okay. Um, is it possible to cut roses back too far? I mean, I guess it depends on the age of your rose. I didn't intend actually on, on cutting the ones that we did in this video back quite as far as I did. And it, it changes based on what you find when you get into the project. And I felt like these are so immature, they're so young, that I wanted to really size, <laughs> size control them maybe a little bit and get them down on the smaller side. If I have, I've got a couple of roses that were here when we moved in and they've got super thick woody bases. I probably wouldn't cut too far down into that. So those end up being quite a lot taller. So I think it just depends on how old your rose is, how big you want it to be in the end. If you're making a hedge with roses, probably don't want to cut them back quite as far as I did. It's all kind of, it depends. Karen said, do you prune wild roses the same way? Um, I live in New Hampshire and my husband years ago dug me some wild roses that were growing beside the road. They are running wild in my flower bed. If they're running wild, I'd prune them for sure. Those you tend to kind of let grow in that kind of big vase shape, you know, real pretty and you've got a lot of space for them. But if they're going out of control, you could absolutely prune them and they would be completely fine. Victoria said, question, will the thin wispy branches eventually get thicker and larger or is their size set when they start? Say a thin branch was growing in the perfect location for shape. Should you leave it? Yes, I would. because And that's the only reason I would ever leave a thinner, wispier branch is if it's pointed in the exact direction you want it to go or if it's you know filling a gap that you want to have filled, definitely leave that one. You can kind of trim it down a little bit because that will encourage like stronger side growth um, from it instead of leaving it you know long and leaving the end on it. Uh, but the other one, most of the thin ones that I get rid of are ones that are growing into the center or they're just like too scrubby and they're not growing in a direction I want them to go in. Uh, Blizzard Snow said, I'm interested in those tags. Can we know more about those? Those are just, I wonder if I even have some right here. Yeah. Oh, I've got ribbon too. Look at that. It's coming off the spool. What was that from? Uh. Okay. These are wrap -a clip I get these down at my parents' garden center. Large tea labels, 13 inches. These are not ideal. I mean, they're awesome because they do show up, but they're not permanent. Like, they break easy, they fade. Um, the reason I did those out there is because we hadn't figured out, I want like a metal engraved sort of mm -hmm. situation because that's the only thing that will last, the t you know, stand the test of time. Because I use the garden marker, which I also have in here. I use a garden marker, which is a little bit better than a Sharpie, but it is faded by the end of the season. You can still kind of see it, unlike a Sharpie usually is gone by the end of the season. These I can still see, but I need to go back through and write names again, because they're already too faded. Uh, D. Todd said, when you're doing major projects that take a while, do you listen to music or podcasts? It seems to make work more enjoyable for me. If so, what do you listen to? I don't, actually. There is a, a rare occasion if there's a dog barking outside. I can't stand that. And so I usually go get AirPods and listen to music or something just so I can't hear that. You uh, will watch shows on Netflix. Uh, I do. If you're doing something, you should set that down. Oh, sorry. So you don't get... <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It's like a, got to keep my hands moving. Yeah. Like, uh, I've noticed that you've done that from time to time. Not, not very often. If you're doing like seed starting, mm -hmm. sometimes you'll set your phone up and, and watch something. Yeah. And it's always like movies or shows that I've, like, I just watched Downton Abbey, the, the, um, one that they put out after the series was mm -hmm. done. I just watched that a couple days ago. Uh, again, for like the 10th time probably. And I like to have things that I know it's going to happen, but it's like a comforting, familiar sound mm -hmm. just kind of playing in the background. And that's what I do typically if I'm out there, if I'm listening to something. But I prefer usually just to listen to the sounds outside. Uh, Kim said, do you have a video on climbing roses and how to prune climbers? We do. And I've still yet to do our colettes again on the arbor. Um, and I've, we did a zephyrine this last week on the chicken coop. Um, but there, there is one that exists out there and we'll have another one here shortly. Daisy said, so informative. Thank you for sharing. Question. I have a Julia child rose and my rose canes were looking nice and green through most of the winter. But when we had some freezing rain, now all the canes are black. Does that mean that the whole rose is dead or can I chop it down to the ground and it'll flush back? You know, I don't know if Julia Childs are usually own root roses or not. Is that a thing with a Julia Child? I don't know uh -huh. how that all works. I know that some of them you can get as own root and sometimes they're grafted onto a different root system that's maybe tougher. 
Um, if all the canes are black and you're not seeing any life, you can cut them back. Try not to cut past the crown of the plant just in case it's, you can usually tell if a rose is grafted or not. So try not to, if it's grafted, try not to cut below that. Uh, but usually the roots are fine and it'll push new growth. Yvonne said, I'm in stone 6B and really need to prune my climbing roses and my, ro and my rose, but the temperatures are dropping down into the low 20s. Should I continue to wait for warmer weather? Wouldn't hurt. If you have time to just leave them and then wait till it warms up, definitely safer. I don't know how low it's gotten since I've started pruning. Those are, are those the highs that she's talking about or the lows? The lows. Oh. The low 20s. Well, oh, yeah. That's pretty chilly. Yeah, but we've got like a 25 day. Yeah. I still pretty mine. Occasionally I'll have to go back in and prune them down a little bit more if it, like the tips suffered yeah. some damage, but I think that's pretty rare. They're pretty they're fairly acclimated after all winter sitting out there. Uh, Lee said, I so enjoy the spring cleanup videos. Question, how long does the fertilizer last once the bag is open? As long as it doesn't get wet, I think it's fairly in indefinitely if it's stored properly. Yeah. Okay, the next video was planting up the four big new con concrete pots that we put at the corners of the Newburgh patio by the Hartley. And then we made some, gun the kids and I made gummy snacks uh, from our homegrown fruit. So strawberries we picked and froze last summer and also grape juice that we canned last fall. Tiffany said, how do you tell cheddar and Russell apart? Couple of main differences. So they're both orange, but cheddar is lighter in color. He's not quite as like deep orange and cheddar has regular feet. Russell is a um, polydactyl. So he's got extra toes on his front paws and they're huge. He's taller too. Cheddar's more stocky. Yeah, I have trouble telling them apart at a glance. Do you? Yeah, it takes me a second. Um, and Cheddar has a much more distinct ringed tail, tail, mm -hmm. and it's much more like blonde, like there's blonde right. mixed in with the like yellow mixed in with the orange. Uh, Kathy said, if you were planting tomatoes in these large pots, would you still use potting soil? If not, what would you suggest? Does potting soil have enough nutrients? Yep, I would just, the same soil we used in those containers, I would use as that for tomatoes as well. Marie said, I am Dutch and don't understand the difference between violas and pansies. Can you explain, please? Yes, violas and pansies. Pansies have larger flowers than violas. <laughs> violas. violas uh, are perennial, so those you can put out in a shady area and oftentimes they will seed themselves around or they'll come back. Pansies aren't, they're cold tolerant, and sometimes they do seed themselves around, but they're not as reliable as violas are. I also feel like viola flowers, because they're smaller, they're a little more stout. When you get the larger pansy flowers, they can kind of flop under moisture or you know freezing temperatures and things like that, and they can look a little bit more messy mm -hmm. than violas. Violas just kind of hold up to all of that. Adrian said, have you ever used a bottom filler in larger containers? Sometimes I see people, people fill the bottom with rock, gravel, or even styrofoam. Wondering if there's a benefit slash uh, of that method versus all the soil. I have tried bottom fillers a few times uh, with not great results. I wasn't happy with those results anyway. I think for, it depends on what you're growing for sure. If you're growing things that just have a shallow root system like super tunias, they don't have a super deep root system. If you've got giant pots like those and all you're planning on growing are little annuals in there, I don't think you necessarily need that much soil, but here in our area, we're so hot, dry, and windy in the summer that we need every last bit of moisture that soil can hold on to. It helps keep root systems all happy and moist, but it also helps keep them cooler. So I find that plants are happier if I just use 100% soil. I don't often change out the bottom soil in those containers, it stays the same. You know, I mean, the top stuff works its way down in there as well, but we typically only take off the top layer and then put new stuff in where the plants will actually utilize the nutrients from that soil. There's a really good graphic that shows the, the moisture layer uh, in pots mm -hmm. and how if you have a large pot, the moisture layer stays at the bottom, like the so it stays soggy at the bottom, mm -hmm. but the roots aren't going down that far, so you're fine. And actually, because there's kind of this exchange with soil is that it can like draw up the moisture that needs it's from oxygen. that. Yeah, from that yeah. layer. So as the roots need it, it can pull from that and your container will actually last longer between waterings, which is the exact same way that aquapots work. Yeah. Or anybody else that does self-watering mm -hmm. containers is that there's water, literally like just full water at the mm -hmm. bottom and the soil draws it up when it needs it. Yeah. So if you add styrofoam or rocks or whatever, what you're doing is you're making that soggy layer closer to the roots. Mm -hmm. And it's just not, some people might have good luck I, depending. It's not like it guaranteed your stuff is going to fail if you put, right. you know, filler at the bottom. Mm -hmm. But, um, 
We did. So we did bark nuggets at the bottom of those galvanized big tubs that we planted the blueberries in at the very beginning. And we ended up tearing the whole thing apart and getting rid of those because it was awful. It's yeah. like the dra it, they drained way too fast. It was not holding on to enough moisture. And I felt like the stuff needed a tremendous amount of water yeah. compared to other things. Um, I do think, though, that if you have um, like wood logs uh -huh. or split wood or whatever i think that that takes long enough to break down i know there's a thing about carbon and how you might need to add more nitrogen, nitrogen to offset yeah. because you're gonna maybe throw off the balance a little bit i don't think that's enough of a concern and i think that you should be fertilizing your stuff anyway so as long as you are fertilizing you should mm -hmm. be fine but i think that that stuff takes a really long time to break down mm -hmm. and so it's not like within one season like the soil level is gonna you know right. drop we did that in uh, the Hartley cold frames because those were so deep. Like I could stand in there and I think, I can't remember, but they were about five feet deep. Yeah. And that's, I don't know how many bags of soil that would be, too much. So we used firewood and we filled up the bottom. I don't remember how far we filled it up. Mm -hmm. But I, I noticed the next season, they had sunk a little bit, but not a huge amount. Like mm -hmm. I was fairly pleased. Sure. And things are doing, I mean, the artichokes in there, which much to Aaron's. <laughs> dismay i guess the artichokes are surviving and thriving in those cold frames it just seems like such an odd thing to put in there you want to know though it was at a point in the year where we had kind of made it through annual planting and i was just working through the oddball stuff that yeah. i had left that i hadn't had a chance to plant out and i just hadn't got to the cold frames yet and i was thinking well maybe we'll seed some zinnias in there and just have like this big poof of flowers come out but then i had these artichoke plants i started from seed and I just wanted to experiment because I thought, well, that'd be kind of a pretty texture coming out. None of them ever produced a fruit in their last year, but I'm thinking they might do it this year. Yeah. The ones in the greenhouse we dug out of the dirt lands, those have fruit. Two of them do. It's so fun. Uh, Vanessa said, I went on Proven Winters to order some shrubs and found out my zone is nine now instead of eight. The shrub I want is for zone H. Should I still order the Sonic Bloom Pink Wigella? What do you think, Erin? Scott? I don't know. I really, I don't think that, especially this year, the, is it USDA zone map? Mm -hmm. I don't think it can be trusted. That's my personal opinion. I don't think that it's accurate. So whether or not that will survive, I can't tell you. Mm -hmm. but, but I can tell you, at least for us, like we are not a zone seven. No, in this, in this case, it's kind of a reverse. It's like kind of the heat thing. Yeah. So if you're now a zone nine and your white gelat is only rated up to a zone eight, it could be that it needs, you know, a certain amount of cold hours in order to be productive and you might just be too warm for that. But since you were just moved, you might be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, they say we're a seven and I will not plant like we're a seven. I will plant like we're a six and I barely plant like we're a six. Yeah. So you mostly plant like we're a five. Yeah. I've always planted like we were zone five because that's what we were for most of my life. Um, and I understand like it has been more mild. The winters have been more mild and the zone is based off of an average low. So it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily get that low, but it can like that. In which case it kills off it all kills your zone your six and So seven why would things. you ever plant so You know, uh, anyway, I think you should try. Just get a small one and see what happens. Mackenzie said, Aaron's hola was so funny. Uh, does Laura give him a heads up when she's filming or does he just stay perpetually camera ready? <laughs> no, I'm not camera ready. In fact, um, I was wearing tennis shoes when I was in the tractor. Uh -huh. And then uh, oh, I, you asked know, I didn't know if you were going to be ready. And I was yeah. like, hold on, let me go put on. Because I always, whenever I'm doing any work out in the garden, anything with soil or I always like to wear boots instead. I just, tennis shoes while I'm doing garden work, they just get mucked up so quickly. So no, I'm not perpetually ready. Like, hold on, give me a second. But I think that, mo I think 50% of the time you're ready. Yeah. It's just Well, I've natural. been doing so much editing lately that like uh, um, a lot of days I'll just throw on like, sometimes I'll even put on slippers because I'm just like coming, I've got boots on. Today. Oh, you do. <laughs> <laughs> but if I know that I'm going to be spending the whole day editing, it's like, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to be in here working on the computer. Yeah. Three Dog Night plus Elvis <laughs> said, my question is off subject, but today I bought some potted tulips with fading blooms at a very deep discount. They were part of a Valentine's Day promo. When should I plant those outside? Can I do it now or should I wait? You can absolutely do it now. Just leave the leaves attached until they're completely died back. That's what feeds the bulb and gets it ready for next season. So yeah, I would plant them anytime. 
or you can wait until the foliage completely dry, uh, dries back, but make sure they're in a sunny spot. Linda said about the gummy treat ingredients, was the grape juice you extract also frozen? Also, could you explain how you extract it and preserve it? Does it really taste like grapes? I always thought the taste comes from the meat pulp of the fruit. Um, so the grape juice I canned in September. It's not, never been frozen and it's so delicious. I did not add any sugar. It's 100% juice from our grapes. So I bought a fruit steamer. It's the, I can't believe how easy this process is. Bought it on Amazon and it's like a giant spaghetti pot with three layers. There's the bottom layer you put the water in, the middle layer collects the juice and it's got like a little tube that comes out of it and that's what you put in your jar and fill it up your jars with the juice. And then the top has like a steamer basket and that's where you put all your rinsed off fruit. So we picked the grapes. Um, I didn't even rinse mine because I don't spray mine with anything. Like mine have seen nothing. They're 100% like organic out there. So I just picked it. I, I did look for earwigs and bugs and things. I found one earwig hmm. in one of the bunches, but I just looked him over and popped him in the steamer basket. And then you just steam it for an hour. So you put, put it on the stove top for an hour. And then when you're all done, I put a little table right below it where that little tube comes out. And I just filled up quart sized jars, tons of quart sized jars of this juice. And then I did a water bath. I can't remember how long, like 15 minutes or something like that. Um, so the grape juice, yeah super easy and i think i did put it in a video i want to say that i did the wind is creating such a ruckus aaron just went out there he's like i'm gonna go see what's going on paul just came in and said it's the roof lovely <laughs> we need a new roof actually you... i don't know this barn might need a new roof i was waiting i wanted it i wanted to get a bid to get a solar roof uh -huh. but it's it's positioned the wrong direction it needs to be like south facing south yeah right? it's facing east and west mm -hmm. and so like part of the roof would get the sun uh, Wouldn't the, the west day. exposure, and he's so open, and we get so much sun. Yeah. I don't know how that works. I don't know. It seems like it seems like it ought to work. You ought to be able to put it on there. I don't know. So this this barn and the house used to have a shake roof, like cedar shakes, like the gazebo did. So everything kind of matched. Um, I know that the our the previous owners of our house had a new roof put on, like not long before we bought the house. But the barn, and I don't know at what point this happened, all the cedar shakes are still on the barn roof. They just put a, big sheets of metal over the top of everything. We don't have any issues with uh, leaking in no. this barn. Like, zero. No. So, that's good. It is good. In my kitchen today said, states are starting to pass laws to protect children when parents show them in videos. Have you opened a trust fund for your children, saving the money they help you make off videos? Some YouTubers have stopped showing their children for this reason. Um, number one, it's not your business. Number two, <laughs> yes, we have. And number three, like, um, I mean, it is it is actually a real thing. Kids need to be protected, mm -hmm. you know, from, from exploitation. So that's like a legitimate thing. And it, it does really bother me. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we, you, you never see us like mic up our kids. In fact, we always have weird like audio issues because they always, it's just them coming and going. We never ask them to do anything specifically. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you don't want to do it, you're just not going to be doing it, mm -hmm. whatever like the project is. Mm -hmm. But if they want to come out and help, it's like we don't want to, this is our life. Mm -hmm. And so we don't want to shoo our kids away and be like, oh no, we're filming. You can't be around us while we're filming. It's like, no, because it's it's a learning opportunity on how to plant plants. And mm -hmm. Like the other day when the kids were helping you with that, yeah. uh, what was it? Uh, service berry. The service berry. Mm -hmm. I think that's great for them to get involved and yeah. Well, oftentimes, Benjamin asks me a lot. He's like, what kind of good work are you doing today that I can help you with? Yeah. Uh, which is the sweetest thing. And occasionally, like, I think about it too. And I'm like, you know, I think I'm going to do this project on my own. And then we'll do some project together later, you know. Um, so it's on the it's always on the forefront. And we try never, it's never staged or planned. Kids just kind of bounce in and out. Yeah. And they were so excited about those gummy snacks, though. I know that's the video we're on. Yeah. They were, they'd been bugging me for days. <laughs> like, when are we going to do it? When are we going to do it? So they were excited about that. Sure. Yeah. So uh, it is, it is kind of a tough thing. You know, none of our content is like directed for children, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't, we're not making kids content. Um, but we also, it's, it's just that weird thing where you don't want to shoo your kids away. And you want them to be involved in your life. Benjamin so. likes to be on payroll. <laughs> yeah, somebody commented and said, you're going to have to add the kids to the payroll as just kind of a, a joke. And I was be reading Benjamin some of the comments. And he was like, what, what? does that mean? And I was like, well, it means that uh, we'd start paying you. And his eyes were just like, he goes, yep, yeah, I'm going to have to be on payroll. <laughs> it's set now. So he can buy his Minecraft <laughs> little toys. Yes. <laughs> 
Uh, Stargazer said, can you add the recipe for the gelatin snacks? I lost track of the steps in the video and really want to get it right for the kids. Yeah, that was a little bit of a miss. I actually said all of the... Um, oh, but I might have cut it you out. You did, and I didn't realize it until after. And I watched it through, yeah. but I think it was just the recipe was so in my brain, and I just didn't really think about it. Um, but I had two different takes, and the one that I really wanted to keep was the one where I said one cup of juice, um, one and a half tablespoons of the gelatin, and two tablespoons of honey, or to taste. That's it. With the strawberry one, it's the same ratios, except for I added a little squeeze of lemon juice in, and I did add extra sweetness just because that's to taste, and I felt like the strawberry one needed a little bit more, uh, but it's super duper easy. Okay, next video is cleaning up the area behind the chicken coop. Oh, that was satisfying. I've been looking at that pallet walkway forever. Uh, we've, when, are you, when are you gonna pull out the rest of it? Well, I don't know. We've, we talked about putting stones in right there so it kind of matched sort of the area or the feel of the area. It seemed like people were agreeing with me no, in the comments. Not, they weren't? Okay. You need to maybe go Maybe I just through. saw what I wanted to see. Yeah, probably. I think maybe it was 50-50. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. But we got the part of the pellet walkway up that I feel like needed to come out the most. And it was mm -hmm. the part that kind of curled around the back that stopped because we had to take it out in order to get the rest of the stuff going in you that area. You got half the band-aid off. <laughs> but <laughs> just <laughs> so much sass anyway um i also did cut back some plants we cut back some foxglove that i kept calling lamb's ear Ugh. but there was lamb's ear in the video too <laughs> we're in the same area so i think it was just on my head or on my brain and i was watching it back through and i thought i called that foxglove lamb's ear like two or three times uh, but we also cut back a happy jack clematis some hibiscus um did some cleanup and potted up that little basket boy planter. Uh, Christy said, do you have, do you have hydrangea plants? Really? <laughs> do you know me but at <laughs> do all? You, yeah. Uh, if so, do you worry about the cats? No. <laughs> also, how many videos of ours have you watched? Yeah. Um, I was going to buy two plants yesterday, but read they're extremely toxic to cats. If the cats eat any part of the plant, they can die. I have seven cats. Please let me know your opinion. Buy the hydrangeas. <laughs> It's not that I don't care about cats, but I think cats know, unless you have really mis mischievous, naughty kitties who will eat the plants, which that's, I've never. Uh, to me, the most, I've said this before, you worked at a vet for how long? Five a and a half clinic? years. Five and a half years. Not one time did you have any animal that was brought in for a plant toxicity reason. And you what? saw tons of different things. One time, a dog that got into a bunch of onions or something, but it was like they were fried in some kind of a, a meat grease. Oh. And onions aren't good. Um, and also chocolate. Like those are the only things that animals were ever brought in for a toxicity sort of issue. I don't worry about that. Like not even for a second. I have hellebores and I have monk's hood. I have delphiniums, foxglove, apparently hydrangeas. I've never heard that about a hydrangea before. Um, all the things in our garden. We have three cats. We have two kids and... I mean, everybody's fine. Lynn said, new editor or Aaron doubling down with the ASMR? <laughs> Which video was it again? This was the cleaning up the area behind the chicken coop. Um, was there a lot of ASMR in that one? Yeah, uh, it was Taylor. Oh, Taylor did that one. Yeah, was it a lot of ASMR? I'm not I sure. I watched through remember. that whole video. <laughs> did you watch through it? Yes, I watched okay. through every video except for the recaps. I don't watch yeah. through those. Yeah, no, that was, that was Taylor who edited it. Huh, cool. Uh, yeah, right now, Aaron uh, is doing 90% of the video editing. Taylor's doing 10% of it. And soon Taylor will be doing 100%. 100% of it. Don said, did you all feel the earthquake this morning? Smith's Ferry 4.9 at 1025. Uh, nope, we did not. Didn't we talk about that? Yeah. Okay. At the beginning. <laughs> At the beginning. feels like it's a long time ago. Paulette said, why not set the basket boy on a two foot pillar? The scale would be perfect. That is a great idea. Um, I would need a pillar that was the same color. So it's going to come out in like a month anyway. You seem so sure of yourself, but you want to know something? When that wisteria grows, it's going to fill in that area. And I actually thought I should do some, some kind of training wires behind the arbor to create like an alcove. Yeah. But and the, like train the wisteria in like a whoop. Here's sort of. what you know in your heart of hearts that you need. Don't ever, speak for my heart of hearts. You don't know my heart of hearts. You need evergreens. Ah, la, 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 la. You need evergreens right well, there. Well, I want to put evergreens. Well, but there's not enough room for your pathway and the wisteria and the arch oh, that goes to nowhere. I beg to differ. I think... I could go out there right now and I could show you exactly where an evergreen could go. It would get too big. Nope. Well, unless you're going to put it in an odd space that doesn't... Because what you need to do... I don't know if I said this in the video. I think it probably got cut out because you and I were... 
<laughs> we weren't like arguing, but I you could, were like the king of negativity. That's what I was, was going. I'm not, I'm not the king of negativity. I'm the king of positivity because I can tell you what you positively need is you need to block off the view of the chicken coop. The Hartley needs to be a different space than the chicken coop because one is farm and one is like English cottage garden. And the chicken coop is, is pretty, but not from all angles. And you need to block off the coop or the, the run part of the coop. This is like, un, people will agree with me. Please agree with me. You need to block off the view to where there are separate spaces with evergreens. So in the wintertime, as you're, if you're in the Hartley, you can't see the chicken coop. And from the chicken coop, you can't see the Hartley. They don't need to be huge. I don't think that you understand. I have to... the same vision. Okay. Well, show me where, like, I would love to see in the ground. Like, I'm going to do one here, 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 and here. The wisteria is in the way. You'll always be able to see if that wisteria exists. Here's what I'm waiting for. If the wisteria doesn't bloom this year, it's gone. Which it probably won't. what I could pour on it to make it not <gasps> bloom. No, no, no. I would never sabotage you. Unless you made me real mad. He, w- <laughs> he would. You would, have, you would sabotage a plant you didn't like in a second. No. You know, I, I would never. And I, the only time that I've done anything is that uh, sunflower. Yeah. You got all kinds of sass over Hate that. Hate mail for that. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Donut Domination said, do you ever let the chickens out of the coop? If you did, do you think the kitties would attack or bother them? I'm not sure what the cats would do. They're pretty used to them because the cats will come. Uh, I don't like think Ch- the cats would do anything. I don't think so. I don't know about Douglas, but I know Cheddar has followed me into the coop before. And he's just kind of like, you yeah. know, once he gets in there, he doesn't know what to do. I don't think Russell would do anything. Douglas would be a question mark, but I'm more concerned about like neighbor dogs. Uh, We have dogs and foxes run through our property every single night. Every night. However, they would be, they go back and roost. That's the nice part about having chickens versus ducks. I would love to have ducks, but I don't know if I want that kind of commitment. I don't want to have to get them locked in every night. You like the idea of ducks, but once they start pooping on everything. That's the other thing. Chickens have the run, and the reason I only have four, which I have a way bigger coop and run than I need for just four chickens, but I want them to have space to move around and not be crowded um, because I know I'm not going to let them out. Because when you make a living making gardening videos and need to have pretty things, chickens just wreck pretty things yeah really quickly but i love the feel of like having them what would happen is if you had ducks they'd be like pooping on the adirondack chairs we have out there yeah pooping on the brick patio then you wouldn't be able to sit where you want you'd be like what (laughs) yeah uh deb said such a great video do your foxgloves come back each year or do you collect seeds to plant each year i love foxgloves because they are deer resistant foxgloves are deer resistant because the deer will (laughs) sick and die if they eat them but i have a hard time growing them in georgia i think i'm doing something wrong or maybe too humid um foxglove are a biennial so you plant the mother plant Um, some of them will bloom the first year and the second year some of them are just foliage the first year and bloom the second year and then the mother plant dies out Um, so they produce so many seeds i don't even know how many thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of seed each stock of foxglove produces but typically what you'll have in a foxglove sort of like drift is you'll have the mother plants going they'll send seed down and it's just like a perpetual renewal of Mm -hmm. the the plant itself because they seed themselves everywhere there you go i don't know about the humidity with foxglove nancy said how do you keep all the leaves and twigs out of your pea gravel a blower works great to blow all of that stuff out and into a pile somewhere that's how we do it Maureen said, can the wisteria be moved to a more desirable location or do they not like that? I don't know. It's just such an established plant. I mean, you could try anything. You can try to move any kind of plant, but I think we'd have to get a tremendous amount of the root ball one. Wisterias are tough though. So, you know, once you get them going, they're, I don't know. I mean, we could try it for sure. Cheryl said, where's the third cat that used to follow you around? I see Cheddar and Russell. Your children are quite the little helpers. So cute. Uh, Douglas, he's he's usually around. Yeah. But if Cheddar and Russell have taken up like solid residence around me during a project, Douglas kind of stays back, and it's kind of vice versa. Mm. If Douglas has found me first, then the other two kind of stay away a bit. It seems like they found a bit of a balance. They all yeah. eat together in the same. I have to put Douglas about 15 feet away from him though, <laughs> and then the other two eat together. Okay. Next video is cleaning up hellebores and pre-sprouting ranunculus and anemones. So we cleaned up 
all of our hellebores. We pruned back the old growth, got them fertilized with some, did I use flower tone or plant tone? I can't remember which one I had Yeah, out. one of those two. Um, and then we went into the greenhouse and got all the ranunculus and anemones soaked and started in their pre-sprout trays. Cheryl said, should I fertilize my hellebores if they're still going to get a hard frost? Yeah, there's no problem fertilizing them right now. Uh, Floral Garden Guy says, amazing video as always. Any updates on Aaron's avocado tree in the background? Doesn't look too well. Um, so the big one actually has buds everywhere on it. I have, since that video, I don't know if it's gone out, if it will have gone out by the time this one does, but I did an organized job in there and I groomed up that avocado, pulled all the leaves off. So now it just looks like sticks, but there's buds and new leaves coming out. Kind of the little one, the little one looked, the stem's still green, but all of the side branches were like kind of soft and mm. I cut them all off. So it's kind of just this, we'll see what happens. RSK Prod said, can I plant hellebores in the ground now? Just, I just bought a few and I'd rather they be in the ground. Absolutely. Um, just keep in mind if you have any hard frost, even though they're cold tolerant, if they've not been used to it, it can harm anything. So you might need to cover them a little bit. So, but they, yeah, definitely easier to take care of in the ground because they're wusses with water in containers. Mm. Ugh, not like big containers, like the big concrete ones, but like in their nursery containers in the greenhouse. Everything else is fine. My seedling trays, even with tiny little soil reservoirs, are wet, and my hellebores are like, Ugh, I can't handle this. This is too much for me. <laughs> oh, drives me crazy. I feel like I have to water those more than anything else. Those and my rosemary, of all things. Home and Nursery said, Did you ever think about doing a very tall U formation or hedge? You know, I we've thought about U's. I have a few planted around a stone walkway. Um, up front, the reason why we haven't done a lot of U's is, and maybe I've thought about U's wrong. I, I used to think wrong about hydrangeas. I used to mm -hmm. not think they could handle our sun. They can if they have enough water. Um, U's, I always thought couldn't handle full sun here. And I thought they would burn because a lot of them did, mm -hmm. like in, our, in the garden center sort of situation. So we kept a lot of them in the shade house and they stayed nice and deep green, never had any kind of, you know how when something starts to burn, they kind of look a little yellow-ish. Yeah. Ish. That's what they would do out in the sun. So I've always shied away from them for that reason. But the Stonehenge Druid, I think is what they're called. The little ones I have planted up front look good so far. So I'm hopeful. And those will kind of get a mixture. No, all of them will get full sun. <laughs> so they'll be put to the test this next year. MXMM said, so what's happening to hellebores in case the locust and lilac dies? They'll just have to move to a shadier spot. We'll find a spot that's shaded. Susan said, if the foliage isn't looking bad, is there a benefit to the plant to remove the older growth and hellebores? If the foliage looks good, I mean, you can keep it. If it, the shape of the plant is good and the leaves themselves look good, I don't think there's any harm in keeping them on the plant. Kayla Smith said, you make me nervous with how fast you are with the falcos. Have you ever missed and cut your fingers? No, but I have stepped on an open pair of falcos with my bare feet. Cut my foot open. Ew. Remember? Yeah, oh, I remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was out in the out in the cut flower garden and we had it out in the middle of the land that first year and I was uh, trying to stake up my corn and it was muddy that's why I didn't have shoes on because my shoes were just caked with mud and so heavy and I was kind of angry at the moment I was like bowling like I don't know going through that project wasn't I pregnant with Benjamin he was already born was he yeah yeah I don't know anyway I remember standing or cutting my foot open on those a day girl said, here in Southern California, 10A, I left my ranunculus in the ground, which you can, which is awesome. They came up in January and have been blooming. Can I leave them in the ground for a few years or should I be dividing them? Uh, you know, it's never a bad idea to divide your plants from time to time. Otherwise, they want to start crowding each other out. Uh, but, you know, if they're looking good and blooming good, you might not have to do it for a couple of years. They're, I don't have any experience in that realm, though, with ranunculus in particular because they don't winter over here. So I'm not sure how they would do year to year. Uh, I know dahlias eventually uh, need to be divided. You can't just leave them in forever. Or you can, just see what happens. Sherry said, when you cut back the hellebores, why do we cut off all the leaves? Because that's cutting back the plant. I don't, I don't really understand that question, I guess. Um, we leave the new growth, take off the old growth, if it's scrubby looking. Grandmother's Garden said, where did you buy your ranunculus and anemone corms? They are such good looking and healthy corms. Most of mine were sent to me by Florette. Um, Aaron sent a bunch of them over. Oh, I don't even know how many years ago now. I mean, I've bought a few. I bought a few again from Florette. I bought a few from, I think, Eden Brothers. I got some. And I've just been uh, able to use from my own seed stock or 
Cornstalk from that point forward. And the last video from this week was planting a service berry and miniature peach tree plus some flower bed cleanup. Uh, so we planted a standing ovation service berry that's in more like shrub form and it grows 15 by four. It was on two through eight, I think if I'm remembering correctly. And then we planted a miniature peach called Honey Babe in a container and we have it next to our pixie miniature peach by the greenhouse. And then we worked on some flower bed cleanup, uh, some more on the west side. Uh, doesn't even like tomatoes, said Benjamin stole the show today. He was in a singing mood. Yeah, he was. Yeah, um, he's just recently learned um, America the Beautiful, no. Yeah, America the Beautiful, is that mm -hmm. the, the title? He, he's been singing the Star Spangled Banner for quite a long time now, yeah. and that's the cutest thing. But yeah, he loves to come out and sing. So although I totally want a honey babe peach now. Uh, question, will you one day give Benjamin garden chores for allowance or just let him help as he wants to? He's a great little helper. I, uh, so we, he, they will have chores. That will be a non-negotiable. Both of us grew up with chores that you're just expected to do to help the family out. Now, our garden is a, it, at a point that it's not normal. Our garden is not normal for a normal, like a normal family doing normal family things. And I wouldn't expect him to go out and do these big mulch jobs on huge flower beds because it's what we do for a business. No, I think there's a point, mm -hmm. you know, but I think you all need to work together for things that you're using together, like keeping the home clean, yeah. you know, picking up your toys outside, um, helping mow the grass, that sort of thing yeah. um, that you would do in a normal situation. So yeah, and maybe be, there's like one one flower bed that's that's well, yeah. his responsibility. Well, or I think learning to do those things, but keeping it fun. Like right now, he's six, so he comes out and helps, and I encourage him and praise him when he does that. So I think he likes to come out and help. If I can keep that enthusiasm going, I know it won't last forever, but if I can keep it a fun thing, it was fun for me growing up. I mean, mm -hmm. there were days where we did like full garden clean out days, and I was kind of, Ugh. but I always once we were in it, it was fun to be with my family. We had fun together, we had good food, you yeah. know, and it was it kind of felt festive in a way. And I hope that they feel that way at some point. And we always had growing up a, a more intense chore list on Saturdays. Once we got that done, then we could go watch a movie and have a Coke. Usually we had a Coke and popcorn and yeah. watched a movie. Um, and then Tuesdays we had kind of a midweek shorter list. And then every day we had animal chores because, you know, we had dogs and cats and rabbits and I had birds, usually chickens and uh, ducks. We had cows and horses sometimes in the pasture. And um, so we were expected to help out with all that sort of thing. Allowance. We were given an allowance at some point. We got an allowance for like two months. I feel like it started and then it was like, nah, we're not really? going to keep doing this. Yeah. It, <laughs> the allowance did not. But you know, I don't really like, I don't really like the whole allowance thing. Um, because I feel like it kind of sort of like teaches kids the wrong message that like money just shows up for free hmm. when like in the real world, that's not how it works. Like you go produce something, you know, like, um, I learned really quick. I could make money from mowing lawns, like just offer something to somebody. Um, and I think there's so many opportunities for kids to make money by, you know, like nephew, Liam. Yeah. Shoveling um, snow. Shoveling snow and like so much so that he has enough money to go buy a snowblower. And, Invest in the business so yeah. that you can do more of it. I, I think awesome. that those kind of opportunities are there. I mean, yeah. literally, if you can get your hands on a rake, you can make some money. Yeah. I think kids learning that work and money kind of go hand in hand because that's just how life is. That's true uh, to a point. But I think having an allowance, a small one, can help you uh, learn a little bit about being responsible with your money. Um, but you'll be more responsible if you earn if it. If you earn it. True. But we weren't given an allowance if we had crappy behaviors or yeah. attitudes. You know, if we were like horrible to get along with or if we were, you know, dragging our feet about our chores or whatever, mm -hmm. or weren't completing things, we didn't get an allowance. Mm. We didn't get rewarded. Sure. Still, if we weren't participating in those things. Um, but when we were given one, it was little. I, I think at some point it went up to $20. Like, like that was the uh, most per month that we got. And yeah. we always had to tithe 10% and then we saved 50% and we could spend 50%. Yeah. But up until a certain point, we only got, which just seemed like a lot to us, but we only got the amount that was our age. So when yeah. I was seven, I got $7 a month, yeah. you know, back then it felt awesome. Cause like I could go get a candy bar right? and it was well, amazing. I mean, yeah. I mean, even back then that was a lot. Mm -hmm. I remember though, always kind of feeling a little bit like proud of myself for, I don't know, when I put the money in the tithe, the yeah. tithe uh, box, I was always like, 
felt good yeah. about it. I felt felt good about how warm I'm, I don't know. It yeah. was just weird. <laughs> um, I know everybody's everybody's upbringing is a little bit different, but definitely for Benjamin and Samantha. And I've thought about it too. Like I need to. We need to start probably coming up with something a little bit more formal. Mm-hmm. But right now he is very helpful. Like he'll go get the vacuum. And he he's a good good yeah. at vacuuming. And I, like, I don't want to squash the enthusiasm well, for helping. Both kids are, when you ask them, they don't pick up on their own, but when you ask them to pick up, like, and Samantha has totally turned a corner in the yeah. last like two months. Mm-hmm. Every time I ask her, she goes, okay, dad, sure. Yeah. And she just has she this says, positive. No problem, mama. Yeah, no problem, does. mama. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they do a great job picking up. Yeah, I mean, they they'll miss a few things and you just point out the things mm-hmm. that they missed. Um, but like, they're both doing really well. Mm-hmm. And they set down what they're doing. Yeah. Like they don't have any problem. They know that it's pretty quick. They yeah. get their job done. They can go right back to what they were doing. Anyway, I feel like we kind of, yeah. anyway, uh, BSJ 1965 said, is the peach tree grafted? I think so. I'd have to go out there and look at it, but I'm fairly certain it is. It looks like you're going to have a ton of fruit. Do you take care of it the same as you do the standard size peach trees you have spring watering and feeding? Yes, except for peach trees in containers will need a little bit more nutrients from me because their soil reservoir, what they have to draw from is so much more limited. Uh, but spraying, all of that, the regimen's still the same. Barbara Johnson said, since you already sprayed your fruit, do you know, do you do this one now or wait till you do the second spraying with the rest? I will do it along with the rest, which I'm going to pro- I was going to do it this week and maybe we still will if the wind dies down a little bit. Uh, Jennifer said, do you label all your trees and bushes to remember what is planted where? No, but I really would like to. Like, in a perfect world, yes, I would be labeling everything. But thank goodness we have videos for most of the things we do, uh, so I can find it somewhere. Uh, Kel said, what is causing the brown areas on the arborvita behind the elderberry tree, and how do you fix it? Those were caused by being smothered by that elderberry, and that was one of the reasons why I trimmed it up into a tree form. So hopefully the arbs will recover right there. We'll see what happens. Amapola said, loved Benjamin's song. By the way, how do you keep your stone or terracotta plants from cracking in the winter? Do you store them or cover them? We don't. I have had a couple of terracotta pots crack. I had one crack last year because it was right underneath our flower shed and it was getting, we don't have rain gutters on it. It was getting all a bunch of water and then it got really cold and it cracked one of those pots. And then I had one crack, but it was an old one, like an old, old pot that was probably already on its way out, and it cracked that year we got 52 inches of snow. Mm. Yeah. Okay, last question. Adina said, it's so great to hear Benjamin singing such a beautiful song. Does he have perfect pitch? (laughs) Uh, She says, I think so. I so enjoy how you combine gardening with great parenting. Uh, Thank you for that. Love all the videos. Thank you for sharing with this itchy gardener. That wasn't a question, that was a compliment, and I thank you for that. (laughs) Anyway, you guys, that's it for this week's recap video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.